you cannot escape from change you have to either adapt to change or you have to stand back every challenge is an opportunity and every opportunity needs to be challenged what skills do you carry to execute the job that is being given to you that's what organizations are going to look for you Good morning and welcome to the fourth session in Unit 1, Organization Behavior, where we are going to talk about the challenges and opportunities in OB, in Organization Behavior. Now, let's try to understand the word challenges and opportunity first. Every challenge is an opportunity and every opportunity needs to be challenged. Now that's what I mean by saying in organization behavior, the meaning of challenges and opportunity. Why? Because they are massive and they are rapidly changing for improving the productivity and meeting of organization goals. Every challenge that the organization is facing today, it can be a simple challenge like work from home. Amid the pandemic situation, you would have seen that companies have now faced a complete change in the work order. They have gone ahead and made their employees start working from home with different kind of gadgets, different working times and zones. And you know, they have brought in a host lot of changes in the way of reporting also. But with all these challenges, still in place, the organizations continue to exist, continue to perform and deliver as per the customer expectations. They're not going back in their words. They're not going back in their promises. That's exactly what you need to understand from the field of organization behavior. You will have challenges, but you will also have opportunities to overcome that challenge. You will also have a feeling, you will also have the features and factors coming in place that can help you to transform your employees, increase your productivity and go back and say that, yes, we are ready to adapt to the new version. So that's exactly where these challenges and opportunities are playing a great role, a significant role in terms of the human resources front. Followed by, although the problems of organizations and solutions over ages have not changed, now that's one factor that we have to understand. Every time, every single year, there is some challenge that is coming towards every organization, whether you be an e-commerce based organization or you are a manufacturing organization or a pure service organization or a healthcare company, but you have something coming in front of you. That might be in the form of a financial problem or it might be a behavioral problem or it might be something in terms of resistance. But still, this problem continues to persist and it continues to really provide a challenge to the organization. And that's one of the reasons what happens is that environmentally, when I keep talking about the, uh, the work environment altogether, there are a rapid changes that have been adopted, that has been spoken about. And every day, people are trying to find some ways to improve themselves. Now, moving further, Although the resultant is learning of a lean mean organizations offered some short run benefits in terms of lower cost and improved productivity. If they continue to do the business as usual, they would not be able to meet the current or future challenges. Now let's take the current scenario for an example. Many people are asking this question. If you are working from home, should the company continue to pay the same salary? Should the company continue to provide the same kind of benefits? Should the company continue to maintain the same hikes and promotion? All these things are a question mark. Why? Because earlier, before the pandemic started, the crisis, people used to go commute from one end to the other end of the city for the job. At that point of time, there were several challenges in commuting to the job. The traffic, the tension, the pressure, all those factors were included. But today, you don't have to worry about it. All you need to worry is that 9 o'clock in the morning, if you're going to log on to your company's network using the laptop, you're going to be in that place for till 6 o'clock in the evening or probably even later. 
There is no more going to be a time zone definition that's going to come into picture. There is no more need for any formal dressing. There is no more need for attending meetings from one room to the another room. Or there is no more need that I have to travel from one city to another city looking up for some sales meeting or for some other business purpose. So with all those things getting removed, making the employee feel comfortable at home, why should the company keep paying more and more? So the question that is now looking into the organization perspective is that, can I change my pay structure altogether? Can I be a kind of personality which can go further, start looking into systems which is going to change the dynamics altogether? So now what we need to understand, what we are going to see here is that as the Harvard Business Review article says, these are the scary times for the managers, very, very important factor. This is really a challenging time. Why? Because one side, you don't want to give up on your employees who have been with you for the last 10, 15, 20 years. They've all been performing extremely well. They've all been doing a great job for the company. They have brought results to the table. But today, the things are changed. If you want to retain them, you have to pay them more. They are eligible. They are due for their promotions or for the hikes, which company is not authorizing because the pay scale, the structure is going to change. The work dynamics are going to change altogether. So the challenge here is that how am I going to retain my team and continue delivering the results? This is a twofold challenge altogether. One side, I have a people issue. The other side, I have a performance issue. So both of these things have to be managed for me and that's where organization behavior is taking a new turn. It's facing a new dilemma altogether. Now, the singular reason for all these firefighting times is that the increasing danger of disruptive change. Now, change has got two phases. I just wanted to talk about it for a minute here. Change is a two factor, a positive and a negative. Now, when change comes for a positive, when people were given handheld PDAs, when people were introduced to tablets, when people were introduced to technology, when people were introduced to laptops and other gadgets, there was a positive change in the sense people felt that anything and everything could be worked out from that virtual machine altogether. You could just start working, you could just start getting introduced to technology and things could start getting moved at a faster pace. But then, now let's look at the negative part of the change. When a change is coming in with a serious amount of challenges, which is going to change the mindset of the employee, which is going to create a barricade in terms of thinking, which is going to create a fear in the minds of the employee, you're not happy with that change. You don't want that change to continue. You want that change to go away. Why? Because today people are fearing about this factor. What will happen to my job? Will I be able to continue like this for all long years? Forever. So now what is happening is that the disruptive change that we are speaking about is going to make a huge amount of difference. It is not going to be the same. There is going to be a lot and lot of persistence that has to be looked into it. Now, moving further, let me bring on the challenges one by one to you. The nature of work is changing as what we have discussed. Now we are going to look into the challenges coming forward. The main challenge is that improving people's skill, quality and productivity, the total quality management which we are going to speak about and the workforce diversity. Before we start stepping into these points and start understanding what is happening here, the first thing that I am trying to break upon is this word called as rigid job structures. There was a time where we used to speak about this rigid job structures. When I talk a rigid job structure, this is typically a nine to five job which I'm talking about. I log on to the office by nine o'clock and by five o'clock I catch the next bus and I go home. Now that was the order of the Indian work environment, especially if I'm going to talk about government organizations or I'm going to talk about the typical brick and mortar companies, which had their employees logging in at nine o'clock and leaving it at five o'clock. 
not really much of challenge. The reason being is that it was a very, very simple, rigid structure where you just have to follow the rules. You're not going to question the organization about the work dynamics, the changes. You will come, you will work for that eight hours or nine hours and just keep moving. So that was the kind of order that we had. But today, that order is completely changed. There's no more nine to five. It can be five to nine. It can be six to eight. It can be one to 10. I do not know why, because the clock has got 24 hours and you can work 24 bar seven because you are there in the home 24 bar seven. So the time zone has changed. The clock keeps ticking and you also keep clicking onto your laptops. There is no way that people can ask you or you can go back and give a reason saying that it's five o'clock, I had to go back home. You are already there at the home only. So now the companies can even wake you up at the middle of the night, literally at the midnight and say that, yes, we want a email to be drafted. We want you to work on an Excel. We want to draft a letter. It has to be done. Why? Because the changes in the structure has started coming in. That is where the dynamics are coming inside. So what is happening here is that we need to improve the people's skill. What kind of skills are you looking? You are looking for a skill which needs to be fast paced, dynamic, changing to the modern times. You need to adapt to those kind of work zones to work styles altogether. So going forward, the skills are going to be more from a personal front, which means to say that you will be looking in from the personal perspective. How are you going to look in terms of behavioral changes? What are all the skills are needed in terms of communication? How are you going to get people onto a Zoom call and make them understand this is what is going to be the future of meetings all about? So a lot of changes are needed in terms of the people's skills. The next thing is that improving the quality and productivity. All of us right from our childhood believe that homework means you do it at the home. That's it. And when we go back, we'll think about it later. First, let's go home, play, spend our time with the family. And then we will do that word called as homework. That's how we have been bought up in terms of our educational front also. One fine morning, suddenly that homework itself becomes your all work. Today, whatever work you do, you have to do from your home only. So that means the quality and productivity will definitely take a beating. Why? Because unless and until you get the atmosphere of working in an environment, in a corporate environment, you are not going to put on that seriousness, that focus into the job. But today, you don't have that option. Most of the companies are not calling you back into the campus, into the buildings. They want you to work from your home, which means the quality and productivity cannot be compromised. You have to continue delivering the same. That's where the quality and productivity will now become an issue. Will you be able to deliver the same kind of work with all the challenges remaining in the home, making yourself feel comfortable, no formal clothes, nobody to monitor you directly. You are just in your own chair, in your own comfort zone, but still, will you be able to give me that quality and productivity? That's going to be a serious challenge. That is where everybody wants to go back think. The second thing is that the total quality management Now, this total quality management is not about an individual. It's about the organization. It's about the entire process under which we are working. So when you have about 15,000 or 20,000 employees who are working from home today, how are you going to ensure that all the 15 or 20,000 employees stick to the same quality procedures? And that is going to be the next challenge that's going to come in front of you. Followed by managing workforce diversity. Now with the concept of remote working coming into picture, age is no more a bar. And there's going to be a different factor of working. Why? Because you will see all ages, all class, all creed, every kind of people joining you into the organization. There is no more need of going back and saying that only people who are in the age of 25 can apply to my company. No, I will have a person at the age of 25, 35, 45, and even 55. Which means my workforce diversity has to be managed to the greatest extent possible. I have probably all kinds of challenges. 
I have people who come from different backgrounds with different thought process and culture who actually try to bring in challenges into the organization. For a human resource person today in an organization, the biggest challenge is that maintain that diversity. We have to go back to that proverb, unity in diversity. Please understand the real meaning of unity in diversity is here. Where you have a 100,000 employees from different backgrounds, but still you are able to follow the same vision for the organization. Moving further, now responding to globalization, empowering people, coping up with temporariness. This is going to be a serious talk for us. The stimulating innovation and change followed by e-commerce, one which we already know and the e-organization, ethical behavior, customer service, which we have been speaking about for a long time, helping employees on the work-life balance and the flattening world altogether. Now look at all these points. You will be able to understand and connect yourself to the modern digital world. What is happening here is that we are trying to respond to a global call. We are trying to change ourselves to the need of the R. And the need of the R is we are all one. There is no more going to be geographical borders which are going to stop us. There is no more going to be a distinction of saying that you are working from India, I am working from US, somebody is working from Australia. No, we are not going to work on the borders issue anymore. We are going to work on a flat time zone which is going to see that 24 bar 7 people are employed. Somebody is doing some work continuously. So which means to say that today we are not going to worry about the ethnicity, the origin, where you belong to. No, that's not going to be the question mark anymore. Time zones are erased. They are not going to be any more time zones where you can stick back and say that I will work only this nine hours. No, you might be asked to take a day off and the next day you might have to log in in some other shift. That's going to happen. So that's where we are looking up for that responding to globalization altogether, empowering people. Now you want your people to take decisions. You don't want your people to again go back, depend on the same manager, depend on the same leader again, say that sir, he will take my call. No, no ways. We are empowering you. Why? Because we are giving you all the support, all the gadgets, all the tools in term of making better decision making that means we are enabling you to learn more we are enabling you to make better decisions so it's your call you want to work yes please take your call or you might go back and say that sir this is not my cup of tea i will not work 24 bar 7 i'm not a kind of person who's too flexible to work I still believe in the rigid principle. So now what I'm doing is that I am giving my employees the empowerment to make their choice. What kind of work you want? What kind of company you want to stick to? What kind of thought process you want to go with? So I'm empowering my people. I'm not giving them a rigid rule. I'm giving them choice, options to think about. The next thing, temporariness. This word is very, very important. Why? Because Sometime down the lane, people were talking about this word called temporariness. This phase will go away. Yes, this phase will go away. No doubt about it. This COVID-19 phase will definitely go away. This pandemic will go away. No doubt about it. We will bring in positivity back to life. But will the online work culture go away? Definitely not. Why? Because when the companies have started seeing the benefit of working remotely, work from home culture has started setting inside. This cannot be completely erased. The temporary factor that things will change again, we'll come back to square one is not going to happen. After a pandemic, people have realized that there are other options of making you feel safe and still you can continue working. So why should I resent myself back to square one? I would rather stick on to the new options and continue so that temporariness, please remove it off your mind. There's nothing called now temporary. Permanently going further, we are going to adapt ourselves to change and that is going to stick on forever. So that's no word that temporarily we'll be working here and then we will go back. No, it's not going to happen. Temporarily the COVID-19 will be there, but after some time that will go away. What is going to come is a change dynamic factor. Now, stimulating innovation and change. People are going to ask you this question. How have you changed yourself? What is that you have learned new? 
What is that you have done in your job in the last one, one and a half years when you are back at home? Did you learn something new? Did you try to do something new? Did you adapt to some skills? Did you do some certifications? This question is going to come to you. Why in OB we are asking this question? Why in the organization perspective I'm asking this question is that this is the right opportunity for all of us to skill and reskill. This is not an opportunity where I can just go back, say that, fine, just let me relax. After one or two years, again, I'm going to go back to my office and then I will talk about development, training and other factors. No, absolutely not. This one or two years that has been standing before us is the right time where you skill yourself. Followed by the emergence of e-organization and e-commerce, which we have been seeing for the last three, four years. The emergence of Amazon, Flipkart and all the e-commerce applications with FarmEasy and everybody coming into play. I think probably in the next few years, we might forget that there is something called as hard cash or currency. Why? Because we have got so much adapted to Google Pay or Paytm or Phone Pay that people have stopped going to ATMs literally. They've all understood that it's all about a digital cash and with the existing of cryptocurrency being in a debate form, Probably if once the cryptocurrency gets completely accepted by the government altogether, I think this would be the right time for us to move away from that physical cash factor. So similarly, what I'm trying to talk about here is that with the emergence of e-commerce coming into picture and the e-organization setup, I think we have to move away from the brick and mortars. We have to move away from that physical building. So this is where we are seeing the next change. The next thing is ethical behavior. Now, if you believe that you're not going to be monitored at your home, you can just relax on the chair where you're sitting. Nobody is going to question you that how many hours did you really put in? The answer is no. Why? Because you are going to be now monitored even more in a stringent manner. Now, people say that very, very clearly because all your work ethics and behavior are going to be monitored by company. In fact, there are many companies to give you an example in Japan. They have started monitoring people behavior, how they are performing at the home, whether they are really sticking to that nine hours, they are doing their job, they are focusing there or they're just whiling away the time browsing Internet, looking into some other sites altogether. So there is going to be a question of ethical behavior that is going to be pointed at you and that's going to be the next change. Followed by improved customer service. Now the customer literally can go back and say that even night 12 o'clock somebody is there to attend my call because that's what we are going into. We are literally becoming 24 bar 7 customer oriented organizations. Followed by helping employees get on to the work life balance. This is a, a, a very big factor, a very big topic altogether. You probably go into Twitter, you probably go into LinkedIn or any of the websites. This one hashtag called as work life balance altogether is being a very big topic altogether because everybody wants to talk about this. Now everybody feels that there is some way there has been a disruption in their entire work-life balance. Because earlier what used to happen is office is office, home is office. Now the things have changed. Home is also office, office is also home. Now you look at the change, the dynamics that have been bought inside. So you cannot go back and say that home and office are separate. They are not distinct. They are the same factors again coming into picture. So what is happening? Work-life balance is definitely getting affected. So people are trying to find ways to bring back a balance. The last thing is flattening world. World is no more spherical or circular in nature. That's, we are going to again defy the rules of physics. Why? Because for a short time, let us just understand here is that the world has now become a common platform that is connecting hundreds and thousands of people across the globe. You are just getting connected day by day by people, by the social apps and medias and everywhere. So you are not an isolated island anymore. You cannot remain in the factor saying that, sir, I'm in some corner of the world and something else is happening on the other side. No, we are all connected and things are happening at a rapid phase altogether. Moving further, improving the people skills. So you have to improve in terms of providing the technological changes, the structural changes, the environmental factors that are coming into picture. 
unless and uh, until the employees are getting equipped themselves in terms of the necessary skills to adapt to the changes, the targeted goals cannot be achieved. So what we are trying to say is that unless and until the people in your site start understanding the changes, they start developing themselves as per the need, as per the requirement, things are not going to change. So you need to drive in that change factor. You need to tell people that this is the right time for you to please get equipped with what is needed. There was a time in India when people said that, sir, I do not know computer, computer is not needed. Why? Because we were happy with the typewriter. Today, if you go to any office and you say that, sir, I do not know computer, I cannot work, probably you will not stick on to the job anymore because anything and everything is done through the computer. Anything and everything has become a digital processing unit altogether. So what is happening here is that you cannot escape from change. You have to either adapt to change or you have to stand back. So this is where you are trying to understand the challenge of OB. There was a time when change was giving you an option. Change was giving you an option to make you understand, to make you realize that yes, the change is coming to the world. Get yourself equipped. But when people started believing that this is not going to happen, let's wait. When it really comes to us at that point, we will get ahead. The change came really very fast. Today, if you start looking back, you are completely left out from the crowd. When you go to the websites today and you start thinking about e-learning concept, there are hundreds and thousands of certifications that are available today, which is actually equipping people, which is making people stronger day by day. And that's how the companies are looking in for. You cannot just go ahead and say today that, sir, I'm a B.Tech in computer science, so I'm also a computer engineer. People don't want a B.Tech in computer science. People want a person who has done some certification from Microsoft or in Java or in some network security or in some Python or in some kind of languages or some security areas, which is actually translating into work. So what is needed is skills is not just qualification. Please understand that change factor. Qualifications are no more going to be a benchmark in terms of assessing you. What is going to be the real assessment is the skills. What skills do you carry to execute the job that is being given to you? That's what organizations are going to look for you. Followed by now, when you start looking into the managerial skills, that is also going to come up in a great way, like the listening skills, the motivating skills, the speaking skills, all those kind of things are going to come with the decision making, all those factors. Why? Because people want to come out of the factors. People want to come out in terms of just being an employee. Nobody just wants to be, remain an employee like that for the next 10, 15 years. Everybody wants to become a manager, a leader in the next 10 or 15 years, which means somewhere down the lane, the managerial skills have to be improved. Now, you cannot again go back in this 10 and say that I'm a technical person. So for me, communication is not needed. You might be a technical person, but communication is mandatory. You learn to talk. Or you cannot go back and say the other way around that, sir, I am more focused in terms of just doing one developing or one testing application. So I do not have to motivate people. It's not needed. You might be a person who's working like a developer or a tester, but you need to start looking into people's skills. So what is happening is that there is going to be an overall growth, an overall change in the personality of the employees. And these skills are enhanced by the organization training and development. The career development programs are going to happen and you will see that happening online. So again, there is going to be a login and password that's going to be provided to you and you can start learning those skills, staying back at home. And this is the way how organizations are going to accept and adapt to you followed by the quality and productivity. Let me just define this word quality because it's the extent to which customers and users believe the product or service to their needs and expectations. Now, let me just put this word very, very simple and straight to you. 
What is quality? Quality according to me is a promise delivered. That's all. This is what you need to learn from quality. Quality might have hundreds and thousands of definition, but let us make it very simple. Quality is nothing but promise delivered. If you have promised the customer that by 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the package will be delivered at your home, that means it has to be delivered by sharp 12 o'clock. You are not going to give a reason saying that why I was not able to deliver at 12 o'clock. Why? Because quality is all about standing by your words. That's what the customer wants. When the customer picks up the phone and talks to you saying that, sir, this is my issue. How much time would you take to resolve it? He wants a deadline. He wants a time factor. He wants a definitive solution. He does not want theory. He does not want excuses and reasons. He only wants solutions. So when you can provide that solution, when you can provide that promise with a commitment altogether, that's where you are a quality oriented person. That's where you become a quality delivery service altogether. Amazon, for example, I would like to bring in here. Amazon followed this factor called as tracking your package. They were the first people to start this logistic all together. Why? Because they wanted the customer to know exactly where your package is. That means hour by hour, minute by minute, or probably day, you will be able to track where exactly your package is heading. So that's the amount of commitment. That's the amount of transparency that we are talking about. And followed by which everybody started coming onto it. Now, when you look into Zomato itself, for example, they say that in the, the food would be delivered in the next 25 or 30 minutes, which means the deadline is already set in the minds of the Zomato employees. They are already kept in their mind that they have to deliver the food in the next 30 minutes. That's exactly what quality is coming into picture. You cannot go back on your words. You cannot say that, sir, these are the reasons why we are going back. So why? Because a customer who wants to purchase something, like an example here, where it's been given about an automobile, has certain expectation. Exactly. Whether it's an automobile or whether it is going to be an auto parts or it's going to be a laptop, he has an expectation. He believes that the company will satisfy his expectations. And if the company is not going to do that, you have lost the customer. That's it. You are not going to think further. The customer is not going to come back to you again at all. So if the any part, like how it is written here, if the engine fails to start or if there is some problem, the customer immediately goes back. That's the end of the story. You will not be able to retain the customer at any point of time. So that's why I say that improving quality and productivity are going to be the milestone, the key driving factors for your organization followed by performance. What is performance according to you? It's a rating characteristic. Let me just put performance in a simple way for you. Performance is exactly like this. It's just like the speedometer. It's exactly like a speedometer. Why? Because once you have started giving acceleration to your vehicle, you don't want to hit on the brakes. You want to just keep proceeding until you reach your destination. You don't want to get boggled down by any of the speed breakers or signals or any kind of thing. You just believe that I want to keep driving until I reach my destination. That's exactly what performance is. Once you have started, you have to reach the goal. You don't want any sort of factors that will pull you down. So that's what organization also says. They want performance to be a continuous process. They don't want performance to be a one-time stand or a one-time factor altogether. Now, for example, in a cricket match, once a player hits a century, the next match when he's going to play, the expectation is already set. His performance has to be a century again. If he goes down, the name, the image, the brand goes down. So that's exactly what we are trying to say here. Performance is again a benchmarking. It's a continuous process. It is not going to be a one-time event altogether. And the features, when we talk about the features, it's all about going to be what exactly you have promised, how you are going to deliver, what are all the components, what exactly that comprises of all those factors has to be there. The conformance, when you are meeting to the expectation, meeting to the benchmark, meeting to the factors of the customer, then automatically you have done a great job. Followed by reliability, durability and services. These two words are quite similar. Reliability and durability, which means the word trust comes in between for me. When I say reliability, I'm talking about the product's probability of failing. 
when I talk about durability, it's about having the life both economic and the technical dimension altogether. So one side, I'm talking about the probability of failure. The other side, I'm talking about the probability of success. Now look at the combination, failure and success. The lesser the failure, the lesser the chances that a product or a service would fail, would not meet the consumer expectation, the more the chance of success. The lesser the chance of success, the more the chance of failure. So you are creating your own dimension. That's very, very important. You are now creating an organization which has both the plus and minus inbuilt in you. So if you are not going to meet it, automatically there is going to be a problem. So your services has to be on the reliability and durability factor. You need to give a value. At the same time, you need to stick on to your success rate followed by response and reputations that we are going to talk about. So when I talk about response, reputations and aesthetics, these are basically something which is very, very important from the line of your customer expectation. As a, as a leader, as a person who's running the organization, your human interface with the people, trying to make them understand, trying to reach them, you know, go through their problems and bring in the solutions, all are going to be an advantage for the organization. Your past performance is definitely going to matter because people look into it. Today, customer review about a product or about a service is definitely going to matter. So that's why I would say that your past performance, your response, your aesthetics will matter to a great extent. Followed by more and more managers are today confronting the challenges to fulfill specific requirements. As I told, why? Because the challenge of quality and productivity is coming up in a big way and you need to start thinking in terms of how to re-engineer the program, how to involve extensively for the employee initiative. So this is going to be a very big initiative that's going to come across. With this, I conclude this session. I hope and believe that all the information shared through this presentation would be of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be learning more about the dimensions of OB. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed, and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.